This little device is a Raspberry Pi. It's a small computer. It's actually about as powerful as a computer inside of your cell phone, any smartphone these days. And it costs $35. It's very small, it's about the size of a credit card, and it's built to be played with, to be tinkered with, to be hacked. And so I'd like to show you a fun little hack, or a fun little project that I've done that allows you to run a digital signage computer screen off of this computer. Uh, this is the this is the actual board, and I just bought a little case for it to protect it. So you just plug that in there, and the board has a lot of inputs and outputs to it, uh, and I'll describe those now. The first thing is a SD card, which is going to be storing all of your data on onto it. So we can slide that in. The next is the power cable, but I'm going to plug that in last because the computer itself doesn't have an on-off switch. It only uses the power that's provided by the power cable. So the next thing we're going to plug in is a Ethernet cable, which allows it to connect to the Internet. A keyboard through the USB ports that allows me to type onto it and an HDMI cable that allows it to project its images and audio to a screen. Now finally I'm going to plug in my uh, power cable so it'll start up. Got to make sure it goes in there correctly. And you'll see that the, the lights uh, on the board have come on. You'll also see over here on my screen, which is the monitor that I have it plugged into, that it's already starting to fire up. You probably can't see the, uh, the loading uh, images here, but it's going through its boot process. It's going through all of its checks to make sure that everything is loaded correctly onto the system in order for it to work. Now the program that I've downloaded to this particular computer is called Screenly. You can see the links for it in my blog post. And Screenly is a dedicated user interface to allow you to take control, essentially, of a screen. So it's really built for digital signage, which is fantastic for using it for things like restaurant menus, directional uh, signs, advertisements, and you'll see in a second a little example of what I would have used it for when I was back in school. So it loads on and it gives you an, a URL to go to. So if you type in the URL into a web browser of a different computer, you will get the Screenly uh, user interface, which essentially controls this computer and that screen. Now, while it's giving you that information, it's doing a little booting, and it's going to show eventually what different types of media we have already on this, this uh, program. So we'll wait for it to do that for just a second. Now the nice thing about the web interface is that it allows you to upload things like images, videos, and other types of uh, assets that allow you to put that information onto that screen. And this computer can be really far away. It can be in a different room, it can be anywhere in the world, but still control this screen. So you're seeing right now a, a, a video uh, that's an online trailer for an uh, online digital movie. And that comes on standard. It's always, it always comes up whenever you install this, this, uh, this uh, software. But I'm actually going to turn it off so it won't come up anymore. And you'll see my software kind of jumped down. I'm going to turn on a trailer for Zero Dark Thirty, which is a, a recent film that is actually playing at my alma mater's film series, Union Board Films at IU or Indiana University. And it should pop up here in just a second after this logo goes away. So you can see, just with a click of a button, I switched out the video that was originally on the software to my video, which is this trailer for Zero Dark Thirty. So it's a pretty interesting way to really quickly and easily and inexpensively create a digital science solution. You can read more about it in my blog. Thanks.